Okay, so can you find the volume of this thing? And uh, what are we looking at here? Well, uh, hopefully you said a cylinder, and that would be correct. So I'm thinking that most uh, of you out there watching this video can find the volume of this, but you're probably saying to yourself, I can do this problem, but I need that formula, okay? I need the formula uh, to the volume of a cylinder. And now, if you don't remember the formula, don't panic. Okay, I'm going to give it to you here in a second and give you an opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. But uh, I would suggest that um, uh, finding the area and volume and surface area of basic figures is, are some things that you might want to consider um, getting into your long-term memory. All right, there's a lot of things in math that you know you just certainly can't remember all this stuff all, all the time. But basic um, area and volume and surface area type of formulas, yeah, these are things that you might want to consider, you know, getting into your long-term memory. And I'll talk to you about uh, how you can do that here in just one second. Now, if you think you could do this problem all on your own, uh, just kind of give, you know, turn this into like a little pop quiz for you. Uh, certainly, I would encourage you to pause the video and go ahead and do so because I'm going to get into the solution here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses ranging from pre-algebra Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in about a week. I'm really excited about that. Um, but I also have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, um, ACT, GRE, GMAT, uh, ASVAB, CLEP exam, ACCUPLACER, ALEX, maybe a teacher certification exam, and many others uh, that involve math, and almost all these type of exams that people have to take, there's some sort of math section on them. Okay, if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on these exams. So uh, believe me when I tell you, whether you're going to college, vocational school, somewhere along your time, you're somewhere on your uh, path in your career, you'll generally have to take some sort of professional exam that has math on it. Okay, well, I can help you out. Just go to my website. If I don't have your exam, um, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you are truly serious about wanting to be great in mathematics, well, then you got to be great at taking math notes. Okay, this isn't, um, it's a simple concept, but it requires you to put in the work every day. But if you do this, you're going to do very well, right? So over decades of teaching math, this has been like the one thing that I can kind of, uh, you know, point to be like, okay, when I see students taking great notes, I'm like, mm, they're going to do well. And the reverse is true when those students were like me way back in 1985, um, 86, 87, 83, well, maybe the whole 80s, maybe even the 70s. What did I do? I was taking notes, but they had nothing to do with math and math class. They were like, hey, are we going to that party? Blah, 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 blah. And then I want to get grades like this. So, if you have a difficult time in your current math courses, you got to ask yourself, are you putting in uh, the work? Because you can watch all the little videos like this in the world, uh, but you're not going to uh, retain this stuff. All right. So you're here to learn math. I'm, I'm here to also emphasize how to truly, you know, um, be great at math. Now, in the meantime, you still need something to study from. So you can use my ma uh, math notes. Uh, those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get to this uh, problem. We got a lovely cylinder here. And um, so let me give, I'm going to tell you what the volume here is. Okay, but I'm going to give you kind of a, um, a the, the formula for the volume. I'm going to give you a little bit of, I'm going to do this kind of like as a hint. Okay, so the volume is going to be the area of this. Okay, it's the area of this circle. All right, so we'll call that like the base uh, times the height. Okay, so if you can do this, if you can find the volume of a circle, so I'm asking right now, can you find the volume, um, not the volume, sorry, the area, okay? If you can find the area of the circle multiplied by the height, you will get the volume, okay? So if you think you can do that, go ahead and do that now. But let's get into the uh, formula for the volume of a cylinder uh, specifically. So again, 
as I said, the volume is equal to the base, which would be the area of that base times the height of uh, the cylinder. So the B here is the area of the circle. Area of a circle is what? Well, it is this right here. It's pi r squared. Okay, so really this B is pi r squared. And what's uh, r? That's the radius, right? That goes out from the center, out like so. Let me use a different color, right? From the center out to the edge of the circle is the radius. Let me multiply that by the height. And you got to be very uh, mindful. We are dealing with volume, okay? So real quick, because students, uh, you know, they ignore these uh, very important little details, all right? So let me just tell you real quick. So in area, your answers are going to be in units squared. So if we're dealing with feet, and in this particular problem, we're dealing with feet here. I think it's uh, 8 and 2. So um, area would be feet squared, but volume is units cubed. So it's going to be feet uh, cubed or centimeters cubed or millimeters cubed, whatever you're dealing with, okay? Don't forget to use the proper units of measure because uh, most uh, teachers, as you know, math and science teachers, will dock you points if you don't put in the proper units of measure. Okay, so uh, pay attention uh, to those guys at the end of your problem. All right, so let's get to the solution here. And uh, again, when you know the formula, you know, this is not that difficult. All right, so here it is, volume of a cylinder pi r squared times h. So pi is what obviously it's the lovely number approximately 3.14 but we don't have to turn that into a decimal right now we we'll just leave it as that symbol pi so our radius is 2 okay that's what r is equal to so i'm going to just plug that in right so and then my height is h so 2 squared is 4 all right i've got them doing this right here 2 squared is 4 remember pemdas order of operations all that good stuff so i got to do the powers first so I got uh, 4 times 8, which, of course, is 32 times this pi. So my volume is equal to 32 pi, okay? But remember, units of measure, because this little symbol right here, if you didn't know that little, like, this right here, this means feet, okay? This, uh, this means inches, and this means feet. Shouldn't, you should be familiar with that, okay? All right. So our answer, we can think of it in two ways. Our exact, exact, precise answer is 32 pi feet cubed. So if I asked you for an exact answer, you would want to give me this. You would want to just keep that pi symbol in your answer. This is not a trivial little detail as well, okay? Because this is exactly, precisely, 100% correct. Now, if I wanted a, a good decimal estimation, then I have to go into my calculator and get a decimal for pi and take 32 and multiply it by 3.14, yada, 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 and I would get well, about 100.48 uh, feet cubed, okay? But again, this little squiggly mark right there means approximately in math. It's not equal to. So all these little details and stuff, you know, they're, they're important, okay? Everything's important. So this is the exact answer, and this is a nice uh, decimal uh, approximation. Again, notice that we're have the proper units of measure. But uh, yeah, this is basic geometry, you know, basic volume, you know, uh, which would come uh, into the category of learning uh, area problems, volume problems, surface area problems, it's stuff that you absolutely need to know. Now, if you got this problem right, I'm going to give you a nice happy face with a good old fashioned 1983 Mohawk, okay? So very, very good. I'll give you an A plus and I'll give you two stars. It wasn't the most difficult problem, but if you got this correct with the proper units of measure, that's excellent, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna encourage you to uh, understand or get these formulas into your uh, long-term memory, all right? There's a lot you're gonna learn in math that is just too much stuff but you know again working with basic shapes and figures all this stuff you know you should you should know okay certainly like the uh area of a circle and you know uh, area of a triangle all that kind of stuff but some surface area and volume formulas come in handy and if you're taking excellent notes okay that's part of the process of learning and getting this stuff into your brain. That's why you want to do it. That's why it's not enough just to like, hey, look at your best friend's notes. And be like, oh, they got great notes. No, it's the process. It's, uh, we, um, we call that, uh, uh, you know, when you, different uh, learning styles, okay? When you're listening, 
you're seeing and you're writing, all this stuff makes for a very rich, you know, comprehension into your your uh, long-term memory. Okay, so, you know, again, I don't explain all this stuff precisely in every one of my uh, videos. I tell you this is the bottom line. The bottom line is that if you're looking for shortcuts, I haven't found them, and I've been doing this for decades and decades and decades, all right? So, but if you're looking for the truth in terms of, hey, yeah, you want to do good, well in math, no, these are the, some of the things that you got to be working at. All right, but uh, listen, um, I, you know, don't, don't ignore um, basic uh, volume problems, surface area problems, area problems. This is really, really important stuff, and it shows up all the time. So uh, a couple suggestions. I um, have more of these type of videos in my pre-algebra, algebra, and uh, my geometry playlist, in case you can practice. But, uh, you know, depending on where you're at in terms of uh, geometry, Okay, I teach basic geometry in my pre-algebra course, and then obviously I teach it thoroughly in my geometry course. And it comes up again in other courses as well, but those uh, two courses you might be interested in. Of course, that will be in my math help program. All right, if you like this video it's to some degree, please consider smashing that like button and please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos, and I'm posting new content all the time. Okay, so whether it's volume or you know, Algebra 2, Logarithm stuff, whatever the case is, you'll find a ton of videos on my channel, Basic to Advanced Math, all there for you. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.